And there came a day, a day unlike any other, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars Comics Daily from Scorcher Hill, hosted by Brian Keown and Matt Wood. From Scorcher Hill, this is Star Wars Comics Daily. I'm Matt Wood. And I'm Brian Keown. Welcome to episode 128 of Star Wars Comics Daily. Star Wars Legacy number 32. Star Wars Legacy number 32 was released January 28th, 2009. Uh, stories by John Ostrander and Jan Uh Script is John Ostrander. Artist is Omar Francia. Uh, colorist is Brand- Brad Anderson. Letter is Michael Heisler. And the cover is by Omar Francia. Well, uh, Brian, how excited mm-hmm. are you to talk about uh, Mon Cala's? Oh, it's a pretty exciting. I love it when the comic has nobody that I care even a bit about. Uh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is weird whenever it goes on these tangents because I, it, it's it, it is such a real it's a real gamble to halt this comic to introduce a, a, a subplot with none of the characters that you're familiar with, and basically the next part of the story following those characters is going to be separated by months. Yeah. It's just it for me I just find it real weird because I mean imagine like like we're having trouble remembering this and we recorded the episodes about this the Mon Cala stuff you know probably what 6 weeks ago or something. Imagine yeah, going like ago. half a year and like oh hey remember these guys? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, sure it was just like no I don't remember any of these guys. These guys are all brand new to me. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. though obviously you know, this Imperial Knight dude was in that issue. Yeah, the it's, last time we saw them, but it's 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 a weird, it's a weird system. But whatever. I mean, I guess it it works. Omar I mean, Francie I will, is a good artist. Yeah, I, I know the I read him as trade, so I'm sure it wasn't as bad as reading him as issues. But yeah, yeah. it just seems so strange. Like a weird decision to make, but. Oh, well. I'm, I'm sure we've said it before. I, I it's got to be at least put in part that Jander Simmons just needed a break, so they had to bring somebody else in to do art. But it's weird that yeah, it's not about Kate or yeah, even even any, any of the Sith or somebody or you know Marasaya or somebody like that. Yeah, the the way that it's usually handled is you know, artist needs a break. Then you take one of the characters from your main roster, and you just do like a small like one shot. Yeah, like this is almost like. I, it's not really the annual system because the annual system is what like all of the annuals across your line are telling like one story. So like if, if if all the annuals were vector comics, you know, in the Star Wars line, that would be kind of like well, what, what they did. Even though that's not exactly what they did. Well, that's not how annuals work generally, anyway. But they, they've done that in the past, though. Well, I mean, Marvel does that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, well, I guess DC did too. Gro- but I mean, it's... growing up, that's how I was introduced to annuals and comics because that was okay. a big thing in the eighties and the nineties. Right. Yeah, but classically, annuals are just like, okay, here's a, you know, here's an extra comic this this year, and it's extra right. long, and maybe readers so are going to get married, or you know, or you know, maybe it's an opportunity <laughs> for the publisher to say, okay, we're going to try this artist out to see what they could do. Sure. Or, you know, things like that also happen, and okay. I, I've, I don't think I've, I've ever seen a a comic do this where it's like once every 10 issues it's another continuation of like a subplot yeah i mean i can't think of anything off the top of my head but i I don't don't know i i just i think it's a gamble uh but you know if any fans are going to be able to follow that it is star wars fans right (laughs) and you know we've talked about this book sold pretty well so i guess it didn't hurt it yeah i guess not uh i just want to i just hope and i have to assume that it's going to go somewhere. Yeah, sh- surely by the end all this stuff is going to do- dovetail in together somehow. And I mean, it's not like it's totally unrelated. I mean, this is, you know, Darth Crate went crazy and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about sure. it. Sure, yeah. But but it would be nice if there was somebody I knew other than this kind of, this Imperial Knight dude that I sort of remember. From like a couple of panels of that last <laughs> right. issue. Right. Yeah. And, and one of them with the, uh, his partner or whatever was just kind of speculating that this is what he was going to do. <laughs> we weren't yeah. even sure if this is what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. I just think, and also like w- w- talk about like keeping us on, on the hook for that Darth crate stuff. 
Yeah. It's like, I, like, I want to know what happens next, but no, <laughs> we're going to stop and we're going to talk about Mon Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let me tell you what happens in uh, Star Wars Legacy number 32. Many of the Mon Cal are in hiding during Darth Krait's campaign to exterminate their race. One group of the defenseless fish people are attacked by a group of aquatic... Excuse me. Every time I start reading, I get the hiccups. Uh, mm-hmm. A group of aquatic imperial machines. Before all hope is lost, the Mon Calas are saved by the Mon Calamari Rangers and an imperial knight in a scuba suit. It's Trace Sind. Sind? Sure. Yeah. Who boards mm-hmm. an imperial vessel and is confronted by a Cilici he, he served with prior to Darth Krait's rise to power. With a great deal of hesitation, he kills the Cilici, causing Krait's Imperials to retreat. Later, in a grotto full of Mon Cala refugees, Sind, Sind argues with Tankar of the Mon Cala Rangers. Sind is mad that Tankar's actions forced the Imperials to retreat. He believes that the Imperials will return to the area to seek them out and become more dangerous. Cut to an Imperial extermination camp, which yikes, uh, mm-hmm. by the way, uh, where dozens of Mon Calas are kept in a tank, diseased and suffering to death. In an observation deck, Darth Azard meets with Vol Eason. I'm guessing that's his name. Uh, a Force-sensitive given scientist. Eason and Azard charge him with force lightning, allowing him to commune with a giant sea beast referred to as a Leviathan. The Leviathan arrives at the extermination camp, absorbing the energy of the suffering Mon Calas. Eason explains that this process allows the Leviathan to absorb their sentience, allowing it to think like its victims. It will now be able to help the Sith Imperials track down other refugees. Oof. That's what that's what they need. They need a giant kraken lizard thing to, to help them find the rest of the Moncala, the poor Moncalas. I mean, I <laughs> look, yes. But this is the only time that's useful. Sure. <laughs> like, talk about a very specific need. I need <laughs> the control over a gigantic sea creature so that I can hunt down fish people. Yeah, it feels like I don't know that this is what's going to happen, but it feels like you're going to lose control of that thing and it's going to backfire on them, but I don't know. I don't see any way that that does not happen. <laughs> right. But then again, I also wasn't expecting Mon Cala Holocaust. Yes, to be to <laughs> to be wading in their own filth. Yes. Because like, they're underwater and I guess they just poop in the water and it just what, you yeah. know, floats around them. <laughs> Dude, it shows like yeah. Mon Cala babies getting killed in this comic book. Yeah. It this is a this is a rough comic. Yep. So much so that I completely blanked on the by the numbers. I don't necessarily know if we see any like dismemberments, but it feels like mm, Yeah, what's should. his name? Could be cutting arms off. I don't know. We see a lot yeah. of stabbings, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember seeing any, but oh, he definitely cuts a dude's head off because there's a dude's head floating way up in the foreground, which sure. was like, wow, okay. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah, that's yeah not, I mean, they're stormtroopers. So that's that's not a yeah. yeah, I mean it is a dismemberment, but it was not one that we count because yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it kills we don't you. usually cut. Yeah, we don't usually cut uh, count heads. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't see him try to pin anybody's arm off. He's just cutting yeah. heads off. Did you know scuba suit is an acronym, or scuba is an acronym? Uh yeah, I don't remember what it's for, but I know it's some kind of. Uh, yeah. It is an acronym for uh, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Nice. Yeah. I bet that some GI Joe comic or cartoon taught yeah. me that. Larry Hamma taught you that one time, and you forgot, Brian. Well, I didn't forget. I knew it was an acronym. I just didn't no. remember what the acronym was. Okay. All right. Well, Larry Hamma is only halfway. <laughs> right. Me. Well, I mean, it wasn't Wolverine who taught me that. It was, you know. I can't even remember what a, what the scuba guy was in, in G.I. Joe, so there you go. Frogman? Tor- Torpedo? I think it was Torpedo. Oh, no, you're exactly right. He was in that gigantic suit, right? Like... Well, 
No, Torpedo, I think, was just a scuba dude. Then there was the dude that had the – he had, like, a underwater ship or whatever, and he had a big – Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, a big, like, old – not old-fashioned, but it reminds me of, like, you know, Popeye would put the, the helmet on and and uh, Deep Sea Dive. Maybe that might have been his name, Deep, deep Sea. I don't know. I'm looking know at G.I. Joe. There, there was Frogman, but Frogman wasn't – he just had, like, the knit cap and fought, like, on the beach. Or was that Beachhead? No, that was Beachhead, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Frogman, that sounds, that's a pretty lame uh, pretty lame code name, but I don't know, so is Stalker, and they still use him, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think you might be thinking of our good old friend. Oh, no, Frogman was a, was a, uh, was a Cobra. Agent. Oh, not that I could see, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, aquatic G.I. Joes? I'm doing a Google search, and it's not giving me much. Yep, Torpedo. I'm looking him up. Okay. Just type in Torpedo G.I. Joe. You'll see him. He's got a scuba suit on and everything. He's a Navy SEAL, dude. He was born in, in, a, in Iaea, Hawaii, dude. Yeah. Edward, Edward W. Lealoha. So the, 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 that guy I remember, <laughs> but I, I do remember like there was like one guy who had like this big bubble head. Yes, uh, I think he came with a ship. I think okay. he, there was like an underwater G.I. Joe thing. Okay. Um... Speaking of things that had nothing to do with anything, I can't even remember if it was this pod- podcast. Where we t- it was this podcast where we were talking about. Uh, it was uh, uh, Popeye. Uh, apparently, the film rights to Popeye have left, uh, I want to say Sony, and mm-hmm. have gone back to Kingfisher uh, Syndicate. And apparently, they are pursuing a the, the Jindy Taratoski or whatever. Uh, making that movie that he once wanted to make. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, okay. Back to Star Wars. How come whenever (laughs) peaceful uh, refugees in fiction get attacked, the moment before they're attacked, they're, like, holding children and... Well, because that's how you know how that is bad, dude. Uh, Okay, all right. Well, message received. Uh... (laughs) We don't see much scuba action in Star Wars. I think that has the potential for being pretty sweet. Yeah. We see a little bit in Clone Wars, and uh, both in both uh, iterations of Clone Wars. But uh, yeah, I just think we need to see more of it. Do you think it was because people didn't like in Episode One the fish scene? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's certainly always always is Montala stuff, but yeah, well, it's Gungans. I feel like you can. You oh, could, that's true. Gungans there could have been there could have been something in Episode One, but Lucas was already spending enough money. Yeah. But, oh well. Huh. So Imperial Knight, which of course just means Im- you know morally ambiguous. Uh yeah, I guess so. I mean, this dude seems reasonably heroic. He's helping the the Moncalas. He is. He is helping the Moncalas, but he also is a little reluctant, I think, because there's that whole scene with the uh, the shirtless fish alien. Uh, the uh, Slushy. Well, yeah, that's the dude who, who who's all like, we, we're just following orders. We work for the Empire. You're supposed to work for the Empire too, right? That guy? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, well, you picked the wrong Empire. Right. And, you know, that seems, that seems like a hard thing to get angry about because it's like, you know, when, when you have two separate fa- uh, factions of the, of the, one evil conglomerate. It's hard to say, well, ours is better. Well, I mean, as the Moncala at the end says, well, that dude was on a ship that was basically committing genocide. Screw that guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I, I agree. But I'm also well, like, I, maybe, maybe I just have a big bone to pick with Imperial Jedis because it seems like they are constantly surprised at how horrible the Empire can be. And I'm just like, they've been horrible for a hundred years at this point. How do you guys not see this? Well, we don't know that Rowan Fell's empire is all that horrible. I mean, there hasn't been really any evidence. I mean, there's no, been no genocide or anything. It's still an empire. <laughs> well, that doesn't necessarily mean it's evil. I mean, and certainly, in our, as, as we've grown up, the empire has an, an evil connotation. But I don't know. Was the Roman Empire always evil? It I'm certainly sure it fell. Well, you sure. That doesn't mean anything. Mm. You don't think the barbarians that destroyed it were worse than the Empire? I mean, probably not, but I don't know. 
I don't think the Roman Empire was was necessarily good. I don't know. No, but I don't think it was necessarily full on evil either. Yeah. Oh no! Empires imply but, that you're giving a lot of power to an individual, and that never seems like a good that. idea. I will completely agree with that, but I, I I don't think we've seen much evidence that Rowan Fell is super evil. I mean, he doesn't seem like a, I mean, he's a politician, so you know, he's got to be at least sort of evil. But he definitely is the the lesser of two evils for no, yeah. no doubt. As far as we know, we we go about twenty issues without seeing him, <laughs> right? So so you know it it things get the the waters, no pun intended, get a little murky. Um, yeah, but I, but I agree. If you're going to call your government an empire, that's probably not a good sign. Right. It's hard to be. And, and, and when, when I hear Imperial <laughs> Jedi, like that's what an oxymoron, yeah. you know? Like, well, I do want to say, I don't think they actually call themselves Imperial Jedi. They call themselves Imperial Knights. You're the one who's always called them oh, Jedi. Like, okay. I don't, oh, okay. I don't okay. Think, you, you're cause, right. You're right. Because they actually say, hey, Jedi. And he's like, no way. I'm an Imperial Knight, dude. I'm that's not a right. Jedi. You're right. So, so I don't think I, I continue to believe that they're not actually Jedi's. They might have, they might be force sensitive and they certainly have lightsabers, but I don't think they've been taught the Jedi ways. That's fair. And mm-hmm. I, I want to apologize to any <laughs> Imperial Knights that I might've offended. Right. Cause this sin guy gets very offended by that. His name is sin too. Like sin. I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch, but star Wars names are star Wars names are at times clunky. Look how much blood that, uh, that serpent man is bleeding on that staircase. Yeah. This is a pretty gory comic book. Yeah. I, you know, do we blame Omar Francia? Do we blame Randy Stradley? Do we blame John Ostrander or do we blame the mid two thousands? I don't know. Probably a combination of all of those things. Yeah. And I blame, I don't know. I'm like, it wasn't like I was horrified or anything, but For, I mean, when Star I Wars, it, Star Wars tends to not lean on the gory side of things usually certainly not bloody for sure yeah i mean as we've said many times they got no problem just chunking a guy off of a bridge or whatever but yeah but usually don't see him bleeding exactly (laughs) that guy could have grabbed a ledge yeah (laughs) right yes we didn't see him die so he could still be alive exactly he just fell to his death right doesn't mean he died he was (laughs) heading there exactly there's a big difference between that and a freaking decapitation. <laughs> oh, no doubt. I, <laughs> but even the even that decapitation, there's no blood. You're right. I do like the decapitation and how his like scuba math, uh, mouth uh, just kind of like falls off. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, because that's cut in half too. Yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, <laughs> I was surprised to see like the Mon Calas, the what, what was their group called? The uh, uh, the uh, Calamari Rangers. That's right. Yeah, Rangers. There you go. They're sweet like battle suits. Yeah, like they're Gundams or whatever. <laughs> I, I was I was into that. I don't like the Imperial officer uniform with like the shoulder straps. I'm not into that that design. I do like the olive green uh, that harkens back to Tarkin. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm not a big fan of really their design. All right. I just, I, you know, call me old-fashioned. <laughs> I mean, they don't have the little caps either. Yeah, those caps go a long way. <laughs> you know, and, and as I've grown my hair out uh, due to the uh, current uh, pandemic... Um, I, you know, I, you, I, I wear hats quite often, uh, like a cap or something. And Mm -hmm. just thinking about that, like if you have to wear that thing is a part of your uniform, it kind of forces you to keep a pretty well-maintained haircut. Yeah, sure. I mean, they're Imperials. They've got to keep their, especially the men have to keep their hair pretty short and tight. This is one of those things that I appreciate uh, now that my hair is getting a little shaggy. All right, so you're saying you want to be an Imperial officer? Is that what you're going with? I'm saying I don't hate the hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, how do you think they got uh, our boy uh, Sind uh, his uniform, his outfit? His Is he using like a repurposed Mon Cala uniform or uh, do they have a few extra human-sized ones? 
I don't know. I don't know how close the Mon Cala were to humans as far as like being on that planet and stuff. It didn't seem like. I mean, I don't, we don't see any other humans, so I would assume. Yeah. I, I just can't see a Mon Cal yes. sitting in that helmet. Yeah. I agree, but I, maybe maybe they stole it from an imp, from the Empire and repainted it or something. Yeah. Because it doesn't look super different than the ones that the Imperial guys have. Their hands are wrong, too. I, I looked at the Mon Cala hands because I had an Admiral Akbar action figure. Yeah, and uh, he had to have a gun that like strapped to his like his his uh, his like uh, arm mm-hmm. because you know he couldn't like move his fingers into like a fist or whatever. So like mm-hmm. you know how like a lot of action figures have those C shaped hands so that you can slide a gun in there real real easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Akbar couldn't do that, and I'm looking at like practically th- human thumbs on some of these Moncalas. Yeah, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I buy it. But then again, I don't know how fast Mon Cal has evolved. It's been a hundred and some odd years. <laughs> That's true. Good point. You could have developed thumbs in that time. I have to imagine also the aquatic people evolved faster than the non-aquatic. Yeah, I don't know what difference that would make, but okay. It's, I don't know. They get a lot more exercise because of the <laughs> swimming. Okay. You know who's not getting a lot of exercise? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know that baby that that lady's hair. Oh. Holding right now. I don't know. <laughs> not the one that dies. But the no, fact you're that... talk... oh, you're talking about the, the concentration talking... camp. Yeah, yeah, those guys are not kind of. Yeah. God, like I never needed Star Wars to go into the amount of detail where they're basically telling me, "Oh, they're swimming in their poop." <laughs> yes, <laughs> they certainly do. Ugh. They swim and breathe in their own filth. I don't know if breathing is necessarily the right word, but okay. They breathe water. That's how. But fish don't. Like, do they breathe? Is it breathe? Yeah, that's. I don't know. That's always the phrasing I've heard. Hmm. If you are a marine biologist, please uh, email us at SW Comics Daily. Is that, no, that's our Twitter. And tw- tweet us at SW Comics. Listen to the thing at the end of the show. All right. Well. As always, going from my knowledge of movies, remember in the abyss when they they do something, they give them something, they give them some kind of solution or something so that they can breathe water when they go deep underwater, and that's what they say they breathe water. I think you process the oxygen from water the same way you do from air. I mean, I'm with you. I haven't seen <laughs> the abyss in forever. <laughs> um, I haven't either, but I just that's trying to think of where have I heard the term breathe water and it's like well there's one how come the abyss isn't on one like it's never brought up in the discussion of like really awesome movies from the 80s I don't know it's, it is awesome yeah it's a great movie but I don't and think I, it has like the aliens moment of like dude this is great yeah. and I don't think it's quotable either yeah that and goes, I was that goes a long way I think they mentioned in one of those Mandalorian behind the scenes because that was the that water creature was the first jump and then they you jump to t1000 and then you jump to oh sure, Park. Sure. Yeah. yeah yeah and then yeah it was ilm that helped make the uh yeah. the water creature in the abyss yeah. but uh holy cow that's a good movie and apparently we'll be able to watch it on hbo max oh nice yeah yeah it's on hbo now and hbo go right now so i assume that i'll just oh well all right yeah well, I have HBO. I just still haven't watched it, so yeah. But it is a great movie. Yeah, James Cameron. It's really good. Probably the lesser of the James Cameron movies. Mm, I guess. I don't like. I I, don't, I personally I think say, it's better than Avatar, but you know, I was gonna say it probably pushes more in the mid levels of. Because I'm like you, I, Avatar would be toward the bottom of his list. I also don't count Piranha. No, I didn't even realize he was involved in any a, a Piranha movie. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to think of Titanic's better than the, the Abyss, right? Mm, I probably would go more the Abyss than Titanic. But Holy Titanic could... crap! Do you know how long the Abyss is? I don't know. Two hours and fifty-one minutes. Wow, really? Apparently, maybe that's an extended edition or something. Surely, it wasn't almost three hours in the movie theaters. They didn't make movies that long back then. I think you might be right because I'm looking at the running time on Wikipedia and it's saying that it's 140 minutes. Yeah, and now that I say that out loud, I, I think there is an extended version. Oh, like no, thank you. <laughs> the extended cut of the abyss, like I don't know. 
That might be good. I don't know. Like I'm like you though. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Google wants me to go ahead and rate and review the abyss. Give me give it a star <laughs> rating. Brian, I'm gonna rely on you here. What should I give the abyss? Are we out of five? Out of five. I'd probably go four. Okay, that's fair. Mm. Uh I don't want to type any feedback. No, thank you. All right. <laughs> cool. All right. We've we've now let's talk, let's talk <laughs> about givens. Is this your first given? Is this the guy with no eyes? Yeah. Yeah. So this guy shows up in A New Hope, or this alien species. Can't okay. scene, real brief. Sure. Um, the Givens are bigger. Well, pff, whatever. I can't. I can't give you the name of a single Given, except for, I guess <laughs> this guy. Yeah. But there is a Given in uh, Heir to the Jedi, uh, the uh, canonical Star Wars novel that came out around like 2014. Uh, that is. A Luke Skywalker story written in first person perspective. Oh yeah, I remember you talking about this before. I I I have always been about that is the worst. It, it's an interesting exercise. Yeah. Man, holy cow. Like Yeah, like a, a short story, fine, but a whole novel like that, that yeah. seems crazy. Especially from a major character, you know. Yeah. It just seems so strange. <laughs> and also first person narrative also demands that you're spending a lot of time with luke <laughs> yeah i don't think anybody luke luke definitely is a character much like many of your x-men where better in an ensemble on ensemble yeah probably so you don't want to focus on luke exclusively for that long he is certainly not the wolverine of the star wars universe although in those movies he's on his own a lot He's, he's separated from the rest of them, quite at least in Empire yeah, in Return. Yeah, okay. yeah, you're, that's fair. But I mean, he's also you know, playing or, off of interesting characters. I was going to say, usually R2 or Yoda or you know, somebody's yeah. floating around with him too. But, but that's that's every movie, right? you got to interact with somebody. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so do these dudes, do we, do you know anything about the physiology? They just don't have eyes and mouths? The physiology, I, mean, I, I don't know. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen them in animation, even though I, I feel like, boy, we need to see them in animation. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they must have shown up in like a Clone Wars episode. But the thing that I remember the most about them from Heir to the Jedi, and this is the reason why I'm bringing it up, okay. even though I'm having taking a long time to get there, is <laughs> they're obsessed with math. Okay. So like they 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 look at everything from like a mathematical perspective. Okay, and, that uh, tracks with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm guessing that's kind of a characteristic that, uh, you know, this one is force sensitive sort of, and uh, yeah, he's got some sort of access to the force because they use that force lightning. But like it kind of makes sense that he's not a full blown Sith because if he is that kind of pragmatic uh, mindset. He's not going to go to something that's very supernatural. Yeah. So, I I did appreciate that element of it. Hmm. Necessarily uh, uploading your consciousness into a leviathan. Eh, I don't know. I mean, he didn't quite do that. They somehow contact him because he says, you know, you as you felt, he's somehow sentient, but yeah. What do you think about their ship being a repurposed AT-AT walker? Oh, yeah, I guess that is what that is. Just like the head of one, I guess. Head and like the body, yeah. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I wonder if it like connects to like legs and stuff when it's not underwater. I kind of hope it does because that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also like that they call this a sea leviathan. Like, are there... Like land leviathans? I've know. always associated the word with leviathan with with is leviathan just a gigantic monster? Because I've always kind of associated it with like sea monsters. That's what I'm saying. Me too. I that's what sea leviathan seems redundant. Seems yeah. if you just call it a leviathan, that's all right. Cool. Yeah, like leviathans are like you know gigantic, like like krakens almost. And yeah, things exactly. Like that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe maybe they felt we need to work in that little extra detail i guess hmm. that's the, he's, he's by the numbers dude and so he needed to throw a c in there and stick too <laughs> how crazy is it when he's like uses like a cell phone battery like he like darth azure like force shocks him into like 
charging up energy to communicate with the with yeah the... I, I guess yeah i guess that's what they're doing yeah I, i've I, it is weird i've never you know like this this comic's introducing a lot of really creative uses of the force true i did know the whole commun commun communication with like animals aspect is very much a force uh thing because like ezra oh, yeah. kind of has that yeah yeah that's uh, ezra's specialty or whatever yeah so i i that one didn't like that one didn't weird me out too much uh yeah. maybe the use of it was a little strange uh especially when they killed the children in the comic book. sure sure <laughs> but uh but uh the the using the force lightning to like i don't know charge up this guy's force ability like it's like it's uh, that scene in the Avengers when Thor shocks like Iron Man's armor. <laughs> right. That 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 was a little hmm, yeah, strange. To it me. is. Yeah. But, yeah. No, no, pretty good comic, even though it is dealing with horrible stuff. That's all I got for this one. Unless you got anything else. No, I'm good, man. Yeah. It, it is all right. Like I said, it's it's kind of annoying. It looks like. I mean, obviously, next issue we continue. Yeah, I it looks like all... I think we continue this for. I think it's only two. Is it just two issues? Think, yeah, those are like Yeah, because I think issues. after that we get back to Cave and stuff. Okay. Or no, no, we're going, it's Garstasi next. Which one's Garstasi? Is that the... He's uh, the... Drew's. Or, yeah. Or at least that's how it is in my trade paper. Actually, some of these issues might be out of... Oh, it is, yeah, because yeah, they've okay. got 36 before 34. Okay, so yeah, so, my, yeah. Mine, mine looked like it went immediately into some Kate Skywalker territory. Yeah, we, yeah. so okay. we'll go to... Two issues of this, two issues of Cade, and then we're back to Gar to an issue of Garstasi, and that's this whole trade paperback that I'm dealing with. I mean, who knows? I don't. I haven't looked at. Uh, I haven't looked at the organization of this. So, but right. usually we, we we go by the epic collection. So, yeah. If uh, we're doing it, them in numerical order, that's how it'll be. Okay. Uh, but that's gonna wrap it up for today. So tomorrow we're gonna be looking at Darth Vader number ten uh, from Star Wars Comics Daily. I'm Matt Wood. And I'm Brian Keown. And until tomorrow, may the Force be with you.